lot of TDs that are saying they're not running for the next election. It's a natural period of renewal when you have been in government for so long, but you also have TDs who have been there for decades. Uh, and what I'm seeing up and down the country is contested conventions. There are people who are contesting conventions to run for Fine Gael in the local elections, European elections, and of course, and possibly most importantly, the general election. So there's a whole swathe of new people who want to be ministers in government, who want to be TDs, who want to be senators representing their community within the Fine Gael family. And you'll see this weekend in the Oradesh, there's about 2,000 people expected to come to contest policy, to debate, to criticise, to challenge, to share their ideas. It's a very vibrant time, but it's a natural renewal in any political party. It happens to be Fine Gael's time mm. for a bit of renewal at the moment. It depends on what way you look at it. I know Fine Gael TDs would say it's renewal. That The opposition would say that the government are, are limping towards the end of its government term and there is a lot of positivity, as you've said, and candidates wanting to run, but there's a lot that don't want to run. The question is why? Well, I'm a Fine Gael TD just since 2020. This is my first term in, in, in the Oireachtas. I'm a minister. I'm here working with the credit unions, which I'm so enthusiastic about credit unions, all 200 of them around the country, um, to try to drive mortgage lending and for, for people to be able to get better, cheaper mortgages through their credit union. And I have so much enthusiasm for that. So I work every hour of the day, as do all of my Oireachtas colleagues. Uh, and there's a huge commitment to public service and a huge vibrancy and energy about all of that. And as I said, I'm only there since 2020. I hope to be re-elected in my own area in Dunleary. Uh, and, there, and Martin Hayden here is working day and night to try to support farmers uh, at this most acute period of difficulty you know, with, with the challenges that the weather has brought in so many different ways for livestock and tillage farmers. Uh, and I see him working night and day to support farmers in Kildare, but around the country. Uh, and, and there's nothing but energy b- between myself and Martin and so many others. Is there a disruption within Fine Gael, the likes of Simon Coveney? Did he jump before he was pushed by Simon Harris? Si- uh, Simon Coveney was such a fantastic uh, minister for so long, for 13 years, when you think about what he managed to do during Brexit and not allow a hard border on the island of Ireland and the long-term significance of that. He has been a huge public servant and he'll be greatly missed. But as I said, it is a time of refresh, renewal, mm. and it is did important he, Did he jump before he was pushed? I he don't sa- know. He said a couple of weeks ago that he was gearing up for the next uh, general election. He was definitely running. Now he has to think about it. What's changed? The change is uh, the, the leadership. Well, there is, yes, there is clearly a different leader. He has to have the freedom to do what he wants to do in relation to cabinet. Um, but I think Simon Coveney has made a huge contribution to Irish politics and I'd be sorry to see him leave entirely. All right. What about some of they're not going to uh, to run for uh, election? And I know that I was reading in the Independent the other day where senior sources within Fine Gael told the Independent that there was uh, anger over the government's handling of the referendum. That was a huge mistake, wasn't it? Well, I mean, you said about TDs not wanting to run again, and I look at some of the reasons for that. I mean, it's very diverse. Say, for example, Richard Bruton, who's been a TD for forty-one years, that's a natural retirement. So, but then very different is perhaps Brendan Griffin, who's been a TD since twenty eleven and is a much, obviously a much younger man. But he's travelling from Kerry every day, every week, you know, for two, three nights a week, missing his young family. And to be honest with you, life can catch up. Politics is very, very demanding. I mean, you miss your children, you you miss the life events, you give absolutely everything to public service. And it it's not a big surprise that after 5 or 10 or 15 years people would like a different opportunity to work in their careers you might change careers over 5 or 10 or 15 years it doesn't mean that you didn't you weren't fully committed to the one that you had it is a natural thing to do and politicians are just people and they need the opportunity to change direction in their lives recognising all of the pressures who knows what happens in anybody's life uh, and what happens within their family and you know it's okay to change jobs Mm, it's all happening though really off the back of the referendum did the government make a Haynes of that in your view? I don't think it's happening of um, I think the uh, it's happened it's been happening for some period and mm. for lots of different good personal reasons. So I don't think it's connected to the referendum. The referendum result was very challenging. Um, I think it was a you know it was, it was a very difficult referendum. I'm not sure that the, the case was made to try to do that, you know, to, to say what we what what we were hoping to achieve with it. This is something that has been called for going back to the Constitution Review Group back in 1996 that these changes about modernising the Constitution would be made. But look, the people decided otherwise and I think our focus now is on the priorities of small business, farmers and law and order and the real challenges that we're facing as communities Mm. between now and the next election and planning for beyond the next election. Did it suggest that the government was out of touch with the electorate and with the people? Because I know speaking to TDs, government TDs, before the referendum, you would have been confident that this was going to pass and it was going to be a yes, yes. But because because it was a, a no, no. Yeah. Are you out I of touch? Don't know how, I don't know how confident I would have been at every stage. I mean, I've been through a, quite a 
number of different referendums, the children's referendum, the marriage equality referendum. Um, and the children's referendum was narrowly passed. There was a, you know, there wasn't that much interest in it at the time. All of the members of the Oireachtas were supportive. It really didn't generate too much debate. So I think referendums are very difficult. I would never assume that any of them are going to pass. There's, you know, one on a unified patent court, which is technically important, but it's not going to capture the imagination realistically much either. But we have these processes. We are one of the oldest continuous democracies. We have votes. We have local elections, European elections, referendums. And that's okay. And you don't expect people to go with the government every time. I prefer a vibrant democracy. I prefer a direct, open democracy where people can tell you yes or no. The most important thing is that you're protecting the process for people to have their say. Mm. And people are going to say yes sometimes with you and they're going to say no sometimes with you. And frankly, that's fine. Look at how good our democracy is relative to what's going on around the rest of Europe. Do you think Leo Varadkar looked at the result and thought, I don't really have the support of the people anymore? I think Leo Varadkar has been Taoiseach and party leader for a very long time. And as I said to you, if if it takes its toll on TDs and ministers in just different personal ways, can you imagine what it's like to be scheduled from 7am till 11pm, six, seven days a week for seven or eight years? It is such a difficult thing to do. Um, It is such a difficult job. And I mean... Simon Harris is going into it with fantastic energy and I wish him so very well because if he does well, the country does well and that's, you know, that, that is, that's the most important thing. But it's a natural thing after that period. Like, Enda Kenny was Taoiseach for six, nearly seven years. It's, it is a tough, tough job physically, emotionally, in every way and I think, you know, anybody who's doing it needs to bring the best of their energy to it and the moment that that ends, the right thing to do is to say, look, it's not time anymore. Should there have been a leadership contest in Fine Gael? Martin Hayden was of the view that uh, a, a, a leadership contest would have been a good thing for the party. Yeah. Were you supporting Simon Harris through and through or do you there think was, there should have been a leadership I contest? I think there was a lot of debate within the party in a very short period about whether there should be a contest. Clearly the view of the Executive Council was that there should be a contest um, and I think you know there was a good bit of discussion but within a short period about whether that was the right thing to do or not. Ultimately I thought that the local and European elections were so close and that there were so many people who were contesting those elections for Fine Gael, including people who might asked to run and that the following week they wouldn't be able to ask the basic question well who's your party leader and the most and, and that they needed to be able to answer that clearly and directly and not have any difficulty around it so in that sense I think so overall you support, a contest supporting Simon Harris from the, the beginning well, Simon, Simon and I had a couple of really good conversations and I mean I went out to support him at one o'clock on the whatever day the same time as Heather Humphreys she was on the television and I was on the radio there to offer our support and I think it's really important I mean we are a democratic party I mean look at Sinn Féin they've never had a leadership election uh, the fact that wh- whether the, the, there are elections within Fine Gael, whether it's for me to run as a candidate or Martin Hayden to run as a candidate in the next election, for party leader, for at the Ordesh we're having elections for the executive council positions. Fine Gael is a democratic party and it should be, to be honest, celebrated for that, not in any way criticised for it. Sinn Féin could do with an odd election or two within their within their party structures, it might, it might do them the world of good. We'll come back to that in a moment. Simon Harris, what do you think his biggest challenge is coming in as leader of Fine Gael and probably as Taoiseach come the the vote on Tuesday. I mean, housing, immigration, cost of living crisis. Uh, We were watching on the television last night the shocking overcrowding in hospitals, particularly down in Limerick. It's not going to be easy, uh, but he's taken over from, you know, Leo Varadkar, who's been at the helm for a number of years here. So there's quite a lot of challenges that he'll face. There is, and any Taoiseach taking over at any time will face very significant challenges. What he's also taking over is an economy that's at full employment, what he's also taking over is a budget that's just at surplus where we're able to invest money for the future, for our future economic resilience. What he's also taking over is uh, a health system that, yes, has challenges in Limerick, but not in other places. And we have the longest life expectancy in Europe. He's taken over an education system that's producing 15 year olds that are the second best readers in the world, the 11th best at maths. You know, there are so many positive, strong things happening in Ireland and we have to protect and celebrate those yeah, and address our ch- Oh, yeah. as in every country and address all of the challenges that we have at any given day. But look over the last five years, we've had COVID, we've had the invasion of Ukraine and what that's done to energy prices, we've had massive inflation, we've managed to bring, we've managed to address each of those, takes a bit of time but address each of those, provide supports and provide stability and structure to people. We will always have challenges, there's no question, 100 years from now, whatever Taoiseach is taking over, will face challenges. But what you want really behind you is the best possible economy, society and structural resilience to be able to 
weather the challenges that will inevitably come. I think immigration, migration is going to be a challenge for the next 15, 20 years because of climate change and because, I mean, we can see it. Look at, look at what farmers are facing at the moment in terms of the rain. Climate change is going to drive migration in a way that's going to be around for the rest of my political life, for, you know, for the, your career in journalism. This is going to be a constant challenge and we have to think about how we manage that cleverly, intelligently, yes, compassionately and in a very structured, structured way uh, that enables us to keep society together. Housing and immigration, your views on that and your confidence in Simon Harris being able to do, albeit he has very little time before the next general election, whenever it's called, but, uh, you know, at the same time, Fine Gael has been in power for quite a while here and this problem is continuing. I know you would say that our housing numbers are doing great, but others would, would contest that. Well, what I'm here in Kildare for is to meet the credit unions to talk about how we can get mortgages from credit unions to, to people. I mean, you look at the mortgage figures, I think there's nearly 700 people or couples drawing down a mortgage for a first time purchase every week in the last quarter of last year. That's, you know, that's nearly 3,000 a month, which is an extraordinary figure because that's a fa- every one of those is a family. Every one of those is a new home, a first time purchase. But I want to do more with credit unions and there already some credit unions are offering mortgages. I've passed the legislation that the credit unions wanted to be able to help them to work together to be able to get mortgages out at scale. And the really brilliant thing about credit unions is not only do they work with people who maybe want to switch a mortgage, who have separated and have a different sort of profile looking for a mortgage, but also they are lending members money. They're not going borrowing it on the wholesale markets in Europe. They have reserves that can be lent so they can offer mortgages at cheaper rates and already I'm seeing that. For example, I was in Ballancolig last week where they're offering mortgages at 3% essentially, 3, 3%, you know, and there's a huge demand for mortgages. So what I'm focused on in terms of supporting people getting access to finance is making sure that the credit unions are delivering cheaper mortgages and providing real competition to the banks because we yeah. haven't had that. So everybody is everybody, whether it's the Department of Finance Department of Housing, Department of Taoiseach, everybody is pulling their weight and trying to make sure there are housing solutions as quickly as possible for as many people as possible. And certainly that's what I'm here in Kildare to do today. What about those that are in the middle then that can't afford a mortgage and feel as though, you know, the waiting list for parts of Kildare here on the housing list is between 10 and 12 years. So is the government doing enough in terms of social housing? Yeah, if you look, I appreciate the lists can be very long, but if you look at the overall list and how it's come down, down since 2016, the social housing waiting list has come down 30 to 35 percent over that period overall, which is very significant. Where I think there is a real pressure is on the affordable housing piece, where people are working, they have families, they don't have very much disposable income, they don't have much in terms of capacity to, to be able to generate savings. That's why we keep the help to buy scheme so people can get their own tax back to use as a deposit. That's why I'm trying to drive cheaper mortgages. That's why we have shared equity scheme. We are trying to deliver different tailored housing solutions to meet people's needs so that they can have housing security. And it's a big challenge for this state, uh, but it's one that is happening in the context of growing employment all the time. What's on the agenda here in Kildare then and where are you going to be throughout the morning? So I'm going to Monastir Evan Credit Union with Cindy Farrell, the manager there, and she's bringing, you know, we've brought together a group, Kildare Credit Union, Creelagan Life, Kilcloon Parish and District, Port Ireland, and a huge range of credit unions to come and talk about the new legislation, talk about how they're supporting farmers, how they're supporting um, people who are looking for mortgages, how we can expand Credit Union Services, which, let's face it, is the most trusted brand in Ireland. And we want to make sure that members, uh, the three million members of credit unions around the Ireland can access the broadest range of financial services, whether they're in a big credit union or they're in a smaller credit union, that they can get mortgages, that we can start lending more to local businesses, that credit unions mm. are a natural place for a local business to go for a different overdraft working capital loan in the same way that credit unions have become such a support to farmers. We have an awful lot of work to do and I'm excited to meet everybody today. There's a message in here from Pat down in Monastrevan who you might see later on today. He says, is there any possibility of getting ATMs into credit unions in towns where the local banks have been closed down? We heard the story the other day of Matty McGrath handing back a cup of tea on a train because they wouldn't take cash. Are we going to cashless in society and are we leaving a cohort of people behind? Pat is so right and actually I was in Roscommon where a number of credit unions there have put ATMs into the outside of their buildings precisely so that people could get cash after, you know, if there's an ATM in a spar shop or whatever, spar shop closes, you need to be able to get cash. Actually having an ATM is a cost to a credit union. It's not, doesn't generate profit. People should understand that. It doesn't generate any money for them. It's a cost. But I have seen credit unions in Roscommon, just by way of example, putting them into Balahadrine, Stroke 
strokes down to support the communities. That is the attitude of the credit union, supporting communities first. And it's certainly a conversation I'll have with all of the credit unions today in, in, in Kildare. All right, before I let you go, and Cahill Berry is uh, waiting in the wings to update us on his meeting with Simon Harris yesterday. Are you gearing up for a senior ministerial role? Are you hoping for a senior ministerial well, role I, from Simon Harris? I am very, very happy working with the credit unions, working to try to drive business insurance in particular for small businesses to try to drive those costs down. I absolutely love my role in the Department of Finance and I'd love to be offered any position, whether it's my current role or any other position, I totally committed to public service and to have the opportunity to work for the people in government in any way is my is my priority. Because there are going to be some movements, I'm sure, when Simon Harris takes up his, his role as uh, Taoiseach and there have been, you know, fingers being pointed at, is Helen McEntee doing enough in the justice portfolio? Uh, Patrick O'Donovan possibly being mooted as a, a senior minister as well. Have, have you got a preference? Would you have a preference of I, any ministerial I, role? The, what my preference is, is working for the people in my community and the people of Ireland more broadly. And that sounds a bit trite, but to be honest with you, it is up to the Taoiseach to make his own decisions. Sometimes I think, you know, we can all be a bit self-regarding in terms of whose job goes where and all that sort of thing. People don't care. People want to see business insurance coming down. They want to see mortgages being delivered by credit unions. That's what I'm here to do today. That's what my focus is, will always be. Do you think we'll see more Fine Gael TDs saying, I'm out, lads? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't know. But as I said, if there are, it's for a range of different reasons. And what I'm doing is going and meeting the people who are literally killing each other to try to contest conventions and have the opportunity to run for Fine Gael in the next general election and there's hundreds of people running in for Fine Gael in the local elections, there's great vibrancy in the party, natural period of renewal and I, I you know, what, what is wrong with that? Alright, Jennifer Carroll McNeil Fine Gael TD and Minister of